each of the uh, different stations had its own design team and they were encouraged to embrace some of the characteristics of the different areas within which the stations sit. But at the same time, Crossrail was really keen that there would be a consistent and coherent look and feel across these stations. We took our cue from the engineering in terms of deciding which elements would be consistent line-wide and which would be station-specific. London has a, a rich history of line-wide design going back to architects such as Charles Holden, Leslie Green, and it really comes down to passenger experience. You know, at a subliminal level, passengers need to really, you know, understand when they're in an Elizabeth Line environment without necessarily looking at signage. The concept within these spaces was about trying to create calm, clutter-free environments for passengers. One of the benefits of the spray concrete lining engineering is it's allowed us to create these very, you know, curvaceous transitions between the different tunnels. And this is a real benefit actually for the passenger in that it really opens up sight lines around the corners and it really reduces the chances of people colliding as they they move from one tunnel to the next. Prototyping is vital for a project of this scale. It's all very well, you can draw and draw. It's nothing better than actually producing something full size, a product or an environment that people can actually engage with. We can talk about, we can view it at a real, real scale. And that allows us to engage with people who are gonna use that. It also allows us to test things. Now you wouldn't think that the seating needs to be tested, but we saw this as an opportunity to reassess not only the scale of the seats, but also the materials and how that interacts with the customer experience. So we did a full ergonomic model. We worked with various inclusive groups. We refined things like the width of a seat, the radius of a handrail, the tactility of those finishes. We produced a lot of mock-ups and prototypes for the escalator lighting, for the totem lighting you see behind me. And we were able to test, make sure the lux levels were right, make sure the glare angles were correct. And it's those sort of things we can do early in the design phase, which will make sure that what we produce is the most cost-effective and compliant products for the stations. Transport environments can often be, you know, quite uniform, uh, often even sterile you know, environments and we were trying to bring different lighting characteristics to the different parts of the journey. So for instance, uh, you know, these concourse spaces, it's about, you know, indirect lighting, which is up lighting the spaces, making them feel generous and spacious, similar on the platform spaces as well. And then the cross passage spaces in between, you know, these are smaller in scale. And here we have direct lighting and you'll notice the color temperature is cooler within these spaces as well. So you get this variety between warm and cool color temperature between the lighting and it's really about trying to provide that variety along the passenger journey. The totem concept came from a requirement for signage at the crossroads of going east or west to the platforms and we saw this as an opportunity not only to put signage at this location but also to gather all these other components. For example you'll see on this totem there's a light on the top. Just below it, there is a speaker. Below that, there could be cameras. Below that it is emergency lighting and then signage panels and even tape barriers, which you can pull across to close off the spaces. It's almost a magnet which attracts all those components which frees up and cleans the environment of the cladding. The platform edge screens are needed uh, for the ventilation strategy and also to keep passengers safe on the platforms. We saw a real opportunity here to integrate a lot of the equipment such as the ventilation, the lighting, cameras, speakers, even things like the you know, real-time information for passengers, the advertising. It's a great uh, opportunity to try and consolidate all of that equipment into you know, one hard-working service wall. You know, the benefit of that is it, what it does is it means the rest of the platform environments and the back wall in particular are left very calm and uncluttered and really create a great backdrop for the, the wayfinding signage for passengers arriving onto the platform off the trains.